another tag video for you today. Uh, today, 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 today. Uh, yeah, I've got another tag video. It's kind of the same premise as the last one. All the books that I sent out have a little piece of something handmade from me. And uh, so this batch of books that I'm sending out, I'm sending more tags because that video was quite fun to make and people seem to like it. So I did it again. Uh, this time though, I've done something a little bit different. Uh, so these are all the tags that I'm sending out. They're in two piles because they're double. And they each connect in the middle with a star. Because I think everyone that bought the book is a star. <laughs> no. I mean, yeah, but at the same time, that's not what it was for. Uh, basically, I did this because I feel like we're all part of this huge creative community and I love being involved in it, but sometimes I wish we could physically like get together and create and I could use your paints. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I wanted to do something that would essentially connect us in some, in some kind of way, some kind of tangible way. So, you know, this tag goes out with one book and her mate goes out with the other book. And if you want to get on Instagram and you're the ones that gets these tags, uh, just hashtag James Luke Burke Creative and you might be able to find your partner on there. And then maybe you can become pen pals or maybe you can get together and journal, paint chat, coffee, beer, whatever you want, you can do it. But yeah, so I just wanted to uh, do something a little bit different and I really enjoyed making them and they took a very, very long time <laughs> uh, because they're all different. I used, I tried to do the same thing uh, to each tag but with different mediums. So basically it started out with uh, my Digi stamp. I sell these on my Etsy store, shameless plug. <laughs> but yeah, so each of them is a Daphne and Delphi set. I don't know whether you'll get Daphne or Delphi, but either way, uh, yeah, they all come in pairs. So, and they connect with a star in the middle because you're all stars. And this video, I'm doing a voiceover, which is a little different for me, and I don't know how it's gonna go because I haven't voiced it over yet. But uh, yeah, I was trying to splice together all the audio and it became a Hollywood blockbuster production. So I'm not about that. And I'm also not talented enough for that. Let me know what you think. If you thought this was a cute idea, try it. Give one to your friend and you keep one. One of these is actually gonna stay with me. So I might post that on Instagram and let me know if you're the one that gets my name. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'll try and let you know about the products I'm using and I'll try and keep it to a reasonable speed. I am working on that. I see all the comments. Anyway, enjoy! Alright, welcome to the voiceover. If you hear jingle bells in the background, that's just Bianca, she's playing. Uh, so yeah, I'll uh, start with what I'm using. This is the Jane Davenport uh, Mixed Media Range. This is the acrylic, and they're matte acrylics, so that's great. Uh, because matte acrylics play well with all the other mediums that I like to use. So, you know, they layer pencils well and inks, and uh, they're not like that acrylic that gets kind of plasticky on top and kind of resists. So. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, I'm just blending them while they're wet on the page. I like to uh, print all the digi stamps, uh, you know, as many as I can on the paper, just to save cardstock, you know, you don't want to waste anything. Things can be expensive. Yeah, so this is, uh, I'm just trying to use up the rest of that paint, so I guess that's how those girls got a little pink. This is the watercolours. Uh, I printed this off on an inkjet printer, so you kind of have to wait a little bit, um, and maybe even use your uh, dryer to heat, not to heat, but to dry the ink on the page because you don't want to uh, reactivate it. Uh, but that watercolor set is great. Just for, The skin tones are just so ready to go, so I love that. Uh, these are the magic wands, and uh, when I'm doing pencils and coloring in digi stamps, I like to do them in a lot of light layers. And uh, I like to start with the base, the base skin tone, and then work in a bunch of shadows with uh, I mean any kind of colors. I feel like it looks more whimsical if you grab a purple and a pink and a you know a bit of light blue. Sometimes I put green in there I'll just go nuts but um yeah so this is I'm shading in the cheeks with some blush and just adding a whole bunch of layers of pencils. I like to build the layers up and there's so much more control with a pencil but it does take a little longer to, to color them in but um yeah, so basically I'm just going to go through and use different types of mediums to colour in these digi stamps. At this point, I have no idea what, what they're going to look like when they're finished, so I'm working kind of intuitively. Just adding more depth with those watercolours. Uh, I'm going to go on with uh, Copic, Copic markers? Copic? Copic? 
These are alcohol-based markers, and uh, I've had these since I was 16. So some of these are drying out a little bit, but they work best if you uh, blend them while they're still wet on the page. So they'll sink into the substrate, and you know while they're still a little wet, you need to uh, blend your other colors in kind of quickly. But there's a little bit of play time, and you can use the colorless blender if it, if you haven't got a really nice smooth blend. If that's the look you're going for, I mean, if you just want them to be, you know, lay down the way they are, then let them dry between layers. But I really like them because they're such a flat look. Now I've got some uh, Tim Holtz Distress Paint. I like those little dabbers. They remind me of um, Bingo. You know the Bingo dabbers? <laughs> Don't pretend. I know you all play Bingo. It's not just me. No, uh, this is finger painting. I see a lot of people when they're working on their journaling, they just do a lot of, um, they use their hands. I mean, they're, they're a great tool. They're a part of our body. We can have them everywhere we go. So I thought I'd give finger painting a go, but I got a little carried away and my chubby fingers aren't detailed. They're not small enough to get all those details in. So they turned out quite messy and they freaked me out a little bit. But I'll get around to finishing those and you'll see how I pull them together. This is the mermaid markers, the Jane Davenport mermaid markers. I'm still not totally sure what's what, what's inside. It's like an ink and a watercolor. It lays pretty flat, but it's so reactive with water. That's make, make, make me think that it's a, maybe alcohol based or something. And I love to lay the colors down and then literally just put water on top of them because it just, they separate and they give this cool kind of bleached out look, but the pigment's still really rich and it kind of just spreads around real fun, so. Those are the mermaid markers. This is a mermaid marker and the matte acrylic paint. I just wanted to see if they would blend and uh, they do. I mean, you kind of have to work with it a little wet, but if you're going fast enough, and I paint outside the lines, especially when they're on a sheet like this, because you'll see I'm going to cut them up and I'm going to, you know, line them around the edges and it won't matter too much. Here I go making the backgrounds. They look like Easter eggs. <laughs> There's a cheap cosmetic sponge. I'd like to get all, you know, proper stuff, but sometimes I just have to make do with what I got around the house, so that they're from Halloween, those cosmetic sponges. Some uh, Dilutions ink. I don't like to plan out too much of what I'm doing just because I feel like it, it, I mean it slows me down kind of and if it doesn't look right I get a little discouraged so a lot of the time I just like to work intuitively and figure it out you know and then I'll I guess that's why I keep adding layers and layers and layers and then eventually sometimes I add too much but that's just how I like to do it I'm just experimenting see that water just separate that mermaid marker I love that look I probably could have just left it at that but um I like to do the most. Here's where I'll line them. These digi stamps have kind of a sketchy look, so I don't like to cut them out directly on the line because I feel like then it looks half messy, half clean. So that's why I line them around the edges, and that, that way you can keep kind of the sketchier lines that are around the border. If you cut them off, it's fine. You can add them back in with a pen, but it's just my way of doing it. It's an Elmer's glue stick. A lot of people ask how I stick uh, stuff down and and not make it warp. I feel like just a regular glue stick works great because it's not very wet, so it doesn't buckle the the pages or the papers. These are some uh, paint over pens. That paint over pen. A lot of people have been asking if if maybe theirs isn't you know white enough, but it's it, it layers. Like it, this one is not. Uh, you know, a, a super opaque white pigment. It's buildable. So if you really need to get up to a really bright white, just let the layers dry in between and then keep going over and over. But I like it for subtle highlights. I just put a rub-on transfer over the top. I had them lying around and I thought they need some crowns, so that's where that came from. This is the Jane Davenport Epic Pen. Uh, this is my favorite pen and I can't rave about it enough. It's a carbon ink, so it's waterproof. And it's a really, really fine nib, which is so great for, you know, adding all those really, really tiny details. And 
it's great for illustrating. I mean, you can do the working lines in that pen and they're so fine. Like I like all that sketchy look. You can keep them in there and it just adds another element to the, to the illustration. So it's one of my faves. That's a Posca paint pen, the fine white. Oh, this is me trying to figure out what to add the star. It is. Uh, the Posca paint pen is my favorite opaque white paint pen. So when I want to do a really uh, solid bright highlight or or just you know go straight over black, I'll use that Posca paint pen because it just comes out opaque and white first go. Just adding some mermaid markers on them, just to give them a bit of, a bit of makeup. That's my favourite part about doing these, I like to put on their, their makeup. So there I've just mixed a few mediums together, some matte acrylic paint and uh, some mermaid marker, and give them a big cotton candy fro. I really like these girls, they're little disco divas. This pen I'm using here, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's got water-soluble ink in it. Much like the Inc Incredible pen. Um, but yeah, I love that because when you're drawing with it, you just have to add some of the water and you can move that pigment around. And it has that really cool like black watercolor look. If you do it on larger areas, it kind of looks like a storm. Here are the pencil ones. So then I just use some matte medium and put it with some more matte acrylic paints just to kind of thin it out and give it kind of a, a glaze, like a transparent look, because I wanted to paint over the top of these and kind of sink them into the background. I had big plans for this and then they completely changed when I went overboard and spruced water over the whole thing. You'll see it in a second. <laughs> There's my makeshift acrylic block. So I was going to do these butterflies and have them kind of look like watercolour butterflies and instead of using a brush I sprayed it and then they, they went crazy. I'll come back to that one and I'll add, I'll make those butterflies into a bow. So if you've got a butterfly stamp out there but you actually need to do a bow, just spritz it with water and you'll have a great starting point. Here are the ones I was worried about. At this point they just look like scary clowns. Is that Posca paint pen again. Now they look even scarier. <laughs> I'm a bit of a messy worker. Everything tends to get closer and closer to, you know, I can start with a really clean table and then it just, all the products get closer and closer to my actual working space and I always think I'm going to change that about myself, but I never do. That stamps uh, had a workout this week. I love to use the wings of some. I don't have a lot of stamps, but the ones I do, like the dragonfly and the butterfly, and I love to use the wings and just, you know, skip having to draw it. I actually like drawing wings, so I don't know why I skip it, but I did. At this point, I still have no idea what's going on. I gave them glasses to try and cover up some of that <laughs> purple mess that I put on there. You can see I just go back and forth. I let things dry over the side and then I work on something else. It's especially when I'm doing a bunch like this, I can let them sit off to the side and have their drying time. Oh, 
here's this uh, Japanese calligraphy ink and it's it reacts so well with water I just love how that spreads out and you can kind of bleach it out with a um, with more water and, and use a paper towel to grab some of that pigment but if you just let it set it'll kind of separate and have a really cool look I don't let it set for too long and then I end up getting impatient and blotting it off so it wasn't look I was going for but I still like it here are the mermaid marker ones so I've got some uh, Tim Holtz distress inks and I'm just stamping them directly onto the page I wanted to do kind of a, a patchwork looking tag it's kind of like if anyone follows uh, Diane Reevely dilutions she does that the the background technique where it's it's blocks of paint and then you fill in the blocks with you know stenciling I couldn't be bothered to pull out the stencils so I just drew them in with uh, Prismacolor markers which they're another alcohol based marker just like the Copics the Copics have a, a brush tip and a chisel tip and these Prismacolor ones have a bullet nib and a thick chisel tip so they may seem like the same thing but they work I mean they're for different purposes I feel like there's me being impatient I'm so messy too <laughs> I can't deal with how messy I get I just get so carried away I want to use all the products at once does anyone else feel like that If anyone's interested in trying this, tag me on Instagram because I'd love to see it. I see a lot of people do um, ATCs, the artist trading cards. I think it's such a great way to share. And, uh, and it's kind of like, you know, all we have left of, of what we used to call pen pals. I had a Japanese pen pal when I was in school. That was fun. Here I am just going in and adding in the details with the, the Epic Pen. It's honestly my favorite pen. I have a bunch of refill cartridges, so I'm looking for this one to last me forever. <laughs> a part of me just thinks I should go and buy about 10 more just so I'll never be without one. I'm trying not to enable myself. These girls got a little emo. I'm using a, an actual calligraphy brush because I like the brush stroke kind of look, but uh, it's a little hard to control. So that hair got a little out of control for me and is not something I'd normally do. But all in the name of experimenting, right? I mean, a lot of people don't don't see what you would do with this or, or why this would be you know something that someone would want to make especially on a tag I mean people don't understand why I would do it on a tag uh, they're small surface areas and it's so it's so much easier to try techniques on a smaller scale than it is to you know take an A3 journal and try it over the whole thing I mean I'm just wasting so much product and what if I don't like it at the end a lot of this is also just experimenting for me I mean do I like this color palette or do I like to use these mediums like this? And I go through phases. I think we all go through phases where, you know, I'm all about inks for two weeks and then suddenly I'm back to matte acrylic paints and then I've got this new pen, so everything's just fashion illustration. When I got that black calligraphy ink, everything was just, you know, black ink illustrations. And it wasn't even Inktober. <laughs> Here are my disco divas. I love them so much. <laughs> These digi stamps just have such vacant expressions. But I mean it's if you add if you add a little detail to the eyes or if you even just pull the corners of their mouths up into a little smile, they completely change the look. I purposefully left them quite vacant so that whatever you added on top would become their expression. Like they don't even have eyebrows, and eyebrows are one of the most expressive features on the face, so. They're, they're quite versatile, but I always can, I tend to keep them quite distant looking. Got more of that mermaid marker. There goes the star.
that pen I'm using there, I forgot the name of the colour. It's a Montana acrylic marker and it is my absolute favourite. I love the colour on that. And I love acrylic markers. I mean, it is just essentially, you know, very liquid acrylic paint, but they dry matte too. And you've got just got so much more control. And a lot of the acrylic markers I have, I actually don't have, you know, acrylic paint that is that color. So it's just a handy tool to have. You don't have to get your brushes out. You don't have to get water out. It's just all ready to go. That's another one there. This one I think is called Shock Pink. I'm probably lying. Don't take my word for it, but it's another uh, Montana acrylic marker. And then I go in with the Jane Davenport paint over pen, that pink one, and those colors are, are very, very similar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that that's a dupe for that. Very different sizes, like the Montana one is, is quite a thick nib, and the Jane Davenport one is quite, you know, you can get a quite a subtle line out of that. So I'd use them for different purposes, but the color is, is a really good match. These are my Sia Party Girls. You know Sia, singer? I really like these ones. One of those I kept. So if you've got the Sia tag, <laughs> I'm not gonna call it the Sia tag. If you get one of the Party Girl tags with the big bow, let me know because uh, you've got my mate. This is another Posca paint pen, and it's a dark grey colour, I love that colour, but I rarely use it. Putting it on this tag uh, made me keep it out, I put that with my stash, so now I'm getting into using that more. Here I am just labouring away on this one. I really tried to pull it together. In the end they just look like fairy librarians in a bunch of garden flora and fauna. I think I pulled them together at the end. <laughs> they, were, they were my biggest challenge. Oh, this one's funny. My friend Stella is a makeup artist and she always jokes with me that I use her likeness in um, when I'm drawing. Just as a joke, because it, it mean, I don't really think about anyone when I'm drawing. But um, and she's always telling me that she's going to sue me because I haven't asked permission to draw her and post publicly. <laughs> so this time I actually did think of her when I did these. <laughs> so now she's got, a, she's got a real reason to use that joke. They're a little grungy, a little 90s. It's back in fashion, who would have thought? I like it though. Reminds me of all the best parts of my childhood. Some of these are a lot more simple than the others, but you know, it's also, while we can add a lot, sometimes there's a great challenge in knowing what to keep out. Especially for me, because I'll, I'll add everything and then some. So some of these I like to keep a little more simple just to see if I can be happy with them, not being so crazy detailed. And I am. And obviously, I mean, look, I'm still trying to add stuff, but... <laughs> These ones are more relatively reserved than the others. And there you go.